Hey friends, John Gregor Barrett with Truth Factor Trust Week. Again, it's January 27th, 2024. And I'm over at my brother's house, just kind of house sitting, watching the dog right now. We're going to do a little message today. What we do here on this YouTube channel is I share with you my personal testimony of how I met Jesus Christ and God in my apartment in 1991 through a supernatural encounter. I didn't know anything about religion. We didn't go to church growing up. But uh, I was going through a very difficult time in my life. And about three weeks prior to meeting God, I had asked Jesus to come into my life. Uh, I had heard a simple message on the sin of rejecting God. And this evangelist presents this more of like a presentation of this is what happens when you choose to reject God. Th these things will begin to happen to you spiritually. And he took us through this 20-minute presentation and I was just like, wow, I never, everything he said was like, yeah, that seems true to me. That, that's true. And he talked about how when we reject God, what happens is we say no to the creator God of the universe. And when we do that, then the creator God is blocked out of our life. The Bible teaches us that it's our sin that separates us from God. So when you say no to God, you're, you're allowing your sin to take over your life. Now, you say, well, I don't believe in sin. I don't believe in all that. I believe that we're energy and, and, and you know, you can, tr you can change definitions of terms and things like that. You can do that all day long to distort the truth. But the truth is, you and I, we're, we're not perfect. We're sinners. And, and the truth is that when we were made originally in the Garden of Eden, when God made us, yes, we were perfect. We were, there was no sin. And that's the truth. There was no sin, and we had perfect relationship to God. I mean, we were perfectly made to, to commune with God. We had a heart that was towards God. We, we, we desired to connect with God because God is truth, and God is love, and God is truth. So we, we desired to connect with God. That's our natural state. The problem is when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they chose to disobey God, and this is where sin entered the world. And you see, it's our sin and our, our, our decisions to reject God is what separates us from God. Then we get become separated from God, okay? And uh, so when he, as he went on that presentation, I was like, wow, that makes all the sense in the world. You see, at that time, I was like 31 years old. I was like, I never even considered my spiritual life. I didn't even think about spirituality and that stuff. But while, while he was explaining everything, I began to rethink my life. I began to rethink, you know, because I had so many problems and I was stuck for so long, I began to think like, you know, maybe this is why I'm stuck. It's because I've rejected God out of my life. Well, at the end of the, the message, the evangelist gives this invitation. If anybody would like to experience the new life that comes when you place your faith in the Creator, in Jesus Christ, if you would like to experience that new life, I want, to, I want you to stand up because I want to pray for you. And well, when he said that, I said, that's exactly what I've been stuck for five years. I want new life. So I just stood up. I agreed with the, the evangelist, and we prayed a simple prayer. He led me in a prayer, basically, that says, Lord, forgive me my sin. Then come into my life, Jesus, and teach me about this new life. And that was my prayer. Then three weeks later, I had this encounter in my apartment. It was supernatural. It was supernatural. It wasn't like, a, it wasn't like I wasn't coming to religion when I made that decision. God showed up in my apartment. And what happened was I met this holy presence and my, the, and, the, and my eyes were open to the reality of a living God. You see, the Bible teaches that God is a spirit, okay? And so, so what happened was I meet this, meet this God in my apartment. If you want to hear more about that testimony, go watch my, my video on, um, gosh, I think the one on uh, 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 God will accept you into the everlasting covenant and the one on... Uh, um, Oh gosh, what's it? There's a couple of them. The recent ones I did, you could go listen and to, to on, uh, God's revelation to you, and then uh, uh, th th go listen to those and, I, and get more into my testimony. And there was just a super. It was a supernatural thing. And and after it happened to me, I was completely confused. I didn't know what happened to me. I I, I knew this. It was supernatural. It was like an angelic presence dropped on me, and then the Spirit of God began to flow through me, and I went, my mind was going, what's happening? I don't understand what's happening, what's happening. And I was, bad, what, what, I was just filled with the Spirit of God. And what I learned afterwards, as I read the Word of God, I learned that I was born again, just like Jesus talked about in John chapter 3. I was filled with the Spirit of God, 
And then I was baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts chapter 2. And then in the midst of my confusion, I asked a question, what's happening to me? Then I heard these words in my head, I'm taking your sin from you. And that is presented in John chapter 1, where John sees Jesus and says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Right when I read that for the first time, I was like, bingo. That's what that voice told me. I'm taking your sin from you. And that's why I believe I met Jesus in my apartment. You see, it was the Word of God. I, I began to read the Word of God, and all my confusion, God took all my confusion and showed me in the written Word of God what had actually happened to me. So I have all confidence that God's Word is true because it, when you know the truth, you are set free. And so after I found out the truth, I was set free. I no longer questioned it, and I no longer was looking on the outside out here for people are situations to make me happy. I learned that when I received Jesus and God into my life, I just received happiness. I received God's joy. I received God's solution for being separated from God. And see, that's what Jesus is, the Messiah. He comes to build that bridge, so he now he's, connect, he's reconnected me back to God, and I'm no longer separated from God, okay? And so this is why you need Jesus, the Messiah, who came to pay the penalty for your sin, but not only that, into, but to restore you back into connection with God and give you the gift of eternal life. So what we want to talk about today is, I want to talk to you today about something that's, uh, I'm just going to talk about a term, we're going to just talk about it. It's called, it's called today's message is going to be called, uh, The Light of the Living. Are you living in the light of the living, or are you living in the shadow of death so this is a question for you the light of the living have you noticed in, in the book of genesis it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and then the spirit of god moved across the face of the waters and then it said and then god said let there be light so light was the first thing that god presented to the earth. Have you wondered why? why? Why was light the most important? Well, here's my ideas. We can just talk about it. Light, what, what do we know about in the presence of light? What happens? What happens in the presence of light? Well, you get life. Everything in this world requires sunlight, the light. It's the light that causes the trees to grow. It's the light that the grass to grow. It's the light uh, that brings life. Okay? And so, when I ask you, are you walking in the light of the living? And, 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 and God is the creator God. He's, he's created all this, this whole, the living. That Jesus said this, God is not the God of the dead. God is the God of all living. So I ask you this question, are you walking in the light of the living? Are you walking with God today? Because that's where life happens. That's where life takes place. So life and light are two things that are together. So, so if you reject the light, then you're, you're not walking in the light. Then you, you don't have the life of God. This is why it's so important. He's the creator God. Now you say, you say, oh, Greg, you're just using that religion, these, these religious words to, to try to convince me to give my life to Jesus. No, what I'm here to tell you today is as a testimony that God is real. When I met God in my apartment, he was a spirit. He's a, he's a, he's a spiritual entity. The Bible teaches this. And notice how I said that it, the Bible says that in the darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved across the face of the waters. So the spirit of God moved in the beginning. So God is a spirit and he moves and he's the, he's the creator God, the creator of all living things. And so when you accept Jesus into your life, what happens is you invite the Creator God into your life. It's that simple. It's that simple. But if you reject God, if you reject God, then you are blocking God out of your life. It's that simple. And so you say, so, so you say well, that's just some sort of religion, and I don't believe in religion. I'm not talking to you about religion. I'm talking to you about a reality. Without light, there is no living. Okay, and God is the creator God. God is the one who created all things. And that's where life takes place. It takes place during the day. During life gr growth, uh, biological growth takes place in light. 
okay we got photosynthesis and all that stuff that happens in plants and and the reality is if we lived in the dark all the time we uh, uh, humanity would be a different we would be different we wouldn't be like we are so god works through his creation okay and 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 here's what i want to share with you and for you uh, we share what we do is we talk about covenants here all the time. I talked about the covenant relationship, and see God. Not only is He the God of creation, but He works through His covenant. And you say, well, what do you mean this covenant? That's like religion. No, it's not religion. What I'm going to talk to you, what I'm talking to you about here is covenant relationship. And you say, well, how do I enter into covenant relationship to God? Well, it take it starts by taking a step of faith and believing in god okay this is this is this is this is covenant let me explain it to you the bible talks about a man named abraham well, well god made a covenant with abraham god doesn't make covenant with too many people but he's made a, about six major covenants in the earth god made a covenant with adam god made a covenant with noah god made a covenant with abraham isaac and jacob god made a covenant with moses god made a covenant with david and god made a covenant with jesus christ okay so god makes agreements with men throughout history in order for God to make contact to mankind so God can reach out to mankind. And that's how he reaches out to you and me. He reaches out through covenant. And in order for you to take part in that covenant, you have to make a decision to enter into that covenant. And this is where faith is involved. I tell people this all the time. Be careful what you believe because what you believe determines your future. OK, so so when you when you believe in God, just as Abraham, but the Bible says, believed in God, then God made a covenant with him. You and I, when we believe in Jesus Christ, then God makes a covenant with us. And it's through this re faith relationship that we have covenant relationship to the creator. OK, but if you reject that covenant, you reject God or you reject Jesus, you reject that covenant, then you can you don't take part in the covenant. It's sort of like a marriage. If you if you reject the marriage, you don't have a marriage. Well, the same thing is with God. If you reject the covenant of God, you cannot enter into a relationship to God. And so the good news is this, that God made a way for you and me to enter into covenant relationship to him by accepting, just as I did, accepting Jesus into your life and believing in Jesus, then we, it's through our faith that we connect with God, okay? So when we believe the Word of God, we are literally connecting with the Creator God. That's what happens. It's like, it's like a bonding moment. It's like, it's like making connection. You make connection with God through faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that He exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when we seek God by faith, when we believe in God, we are connecting with God. And this is where the relationship takes place. I say this all the time. Covenant is where God fulfills his promises to you individually. So if you don't enter when you enter into that covenant, then God now can God can now fulfill his promises to you. And it happens when you make a faith decision, okay? Now, I'm going to encourage you, and, and, and this is all happens, this all happens in the light of the living. So are you walking in the land of the living, the light of the living? This is, this is walking with God. Is God in your life? Have you received Jesus into your life? Have you asked God to come and be part of your life? If you, have you invited the Creator God to come be part of your life? You say, Greg, that's just all silly religious terminology. No, it's not. It's, it's faith. This is where the faith realm. See, God operates through faith. That's the only realm he operates in. God doesn't operate through religion. God operates through faith. When, when you connect, here's how you connect with God. It's by believing in God. Jesus said this. I'm, I'm gonna, don't take my word for it. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said this. This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom the Father has sent. That you, in other words, that you believe on the Lord Jesus whom the Father has sent. Now, before Jesus, if you were an Israelite or from Israel, you would, you would to do the work of, the God, work of God, you would just believe 
on him whom the Father has sent. Who, who did the Father send? Well, the Father sent Moses. Believe on Moses, the words of Moses, whom the Father has sent. This was the old covenant. This was the, the, the Mosaic law. This was the Mosaic covenant. Believe on on Moses, whom the Father has sent, or believe on the prophets, believe on Jeremiah, whom the Father has sent, or believe on Daniel, whom the Father has sent. This is what it means to connect with God, by believing on those men in the past whom the Father has sent. And who are these, who are these men? These are the holy prophets of God. This is how we get our Bible. Our Bible was written it says, by holy men of God who are moved by the Holy Spirit. So when we believe on those holy men that God sent to us, we are working the work of God in our life. We are working out our salvation. We are connecting with God. We are walking in the light of the living. David said this, Thy word, O Lord, is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. So it's the word of God that brings light. And so so when we believe in the Word of God, we are believing in the light of God. What does it say in the, in the Gospel of John? It says in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then all things were made by Him, and without Him there was not anything made. Uh, was not anything made. And it says, uh, And in Him was life. And that life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness doesn't understand it. Okay, so that's the light. This is, this is when God, the, the Word of God is light. It's light. And when you receive Jesus, Jesus said, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. So when you receive Jesus, you're receiving the Word of God, and the Word of God brings light. So are you walking in the light of the living today, that's a challenge I have to you. Now I'm going to invite you to take a challenge called the John 21 Day Challenge. I encourage you, take the Gospel of John, read one chapter a day every day for 21 days straight. Just read that out loud in the morning. Just read it out loud. You don't need to understand it all, but read it like you're reading a novel. And as you read that, what you're doing is you are literally confessing the Word of God. You are connecting with God, whether you know it or not. And it won't take you 15, 20 minutes a day to read one chapter a day. As you read that every day for 21 days straight, you are connecting with God every day for about 20 minutes. Read it out loud. And I encourage you to do that. And at the end of the day, just reflect on your day and ask a question. Is, how is my life changing? Is my life changing at all? Just do this for 21 days. I believe in that 21-day period, God's going to reveal some things to you to help you understand something about yourself or something about what you need to do next if you want to continue this journey, this faith journey with God. You see, getting to know God is not about religion. It's about a journey. It's about you taking a faith journey and daring to believe in God. And this is where the journey takes place. It's in your faith journey. And so if you'll do that for 21 days, I believe with all my heart after the end of 21 days, you're going to know what to do to take that next step with God. So I encourage you, take that John 21 day challenge and don't give up because the devil's going to tell you right after you shut this off, the devil's going to tell you, oh, he's just telling you all that religious stuff. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Tell the devil to shut up. I do know what I'm talking about. I've experienced it in my life and I'm giving you the truth. The word of God will change your life. That's why God wrote it. That's why God, the holy men of God recorded it and put it in a book because the, the, God changes lives. Now the devil tells you, oh, that's just fake. It's not real. Don't you know that God's energy. He's going to tell you all kind of scientific stuff to get you distracted. Don't listen to him. Put your trust in the living God, and I can guarantee you, you'll never regret it. This is John Gregor Bear with The Truth Factor, encouraging you open your mind to the ways of God, open your heart to the love of God. You just might be surprised. I'll catch you in the next video.